I know it's been a while since I've posted a video about any watches. It's been a long time. And part of that is due to me changing my collecting, so to speak. I've narrowed it down to just specific companies now. And these aren't the highest grade watches ever made. These aren't the fanciest watches ever made. They don't have t 10 different complications. There are no repeaters and there's no railroad. But what there is, is rarity. And that's kind of what I was going after. So we have Cheshire and we have Appleton. These Appletons have absolutely nothing to do with Appleton and Tracy. These watches have to do with the Appleton Watch Company in Wisconsin. These are from Cheshire. The Cheshire Watch Company was defunct before Appleton started production. Now, how these are linked is by a gentleman by the name of Orpheus E. Bell. O. E. Bell in 1900 decided he wanted to start a watch company. He organized what was called the Remington Watch Company. And he was going to sell watches out of Appleton, Wisconsin with the Appleton Watch Company name. Now, in order to do such, he needed equipment and machinery. He had bought the factory equipment from the defunct Cheshire Company years that had failed years before Appleton even became a thing. So, in 1901, he started building this building to produce the Appleton watches. Um, he had his fingers in a lot of different pies, so to speak. Western Watch Case Company, Brooklyn Watch Case Company, all sorts of, all over the place, right? And in 1902, in June, he was messing around with, of course, the Brooklyn Watch Case Company and such. You know, while at the same time dealing with getting the machinery for this all tooled up and ready to go. This was in January 1902. So he was kind of all over the place. Now they start producing the watches using a Cheshire design. Okay, And we're going to dispel quite a few theories and ideas about this as we go. The Remington Watch Company, or the Remington Watch Company, which essentially was the Appleton Watch Company, went into receivership, and they closed their doors on September 25th, 1903. So remember, the equipment was being installed January 1902. So by the, before even close to the end of 1903, done. Okay, they paid off the final wages of the workers, which was like a thousand and seven hundred and twelve dollars. Okay, that was it. They were done. Okay. But I don't think that's where necessarily everything completely stopped. There is a fake railroad watch that was produced and is attributed to the Appleton Watch Company. And I completely disagree that it was made during the time of Appleton. I think it was made after. The serial number range is after the Appleton. The reason that's important is because when O.E. Bell started Appleton, he had continued the serial numbers from Cheshire. He didn't start over. Okay. So, we've got a company that survived for a very short period of time. O.E. Bell went to try to get a company, get the move company moved to Oshkosh, Wisconsin, which is kind of just really literally down the road, in a way, from Appleton. And that fell through. That didn't work out. And... There was the Lima Watch Company, which never produced a single watch that he had his fingers in after Appleton. So this fake railroad watch you come across mentioned being attributed to Appleton. I disagree on it being an Appleton product. Uh, there's a couple of reasons, and we'll get into that. First, let's talk about the watches themselves. They came in single sunk enamel dials, Roman numeral, Arabic numeral, Gold fill cases. The gold fill cases have various patterns on the back. All these cases are marked Appleton Watch Company. 
they're not marked western watch case company they're not marked brooklyn watch case company they are all marked appleton watch company okay so one long-standing idea was well the appletons are simply a continuation of the last design that Cheshire made. This is that design. This is an 18 size Cheshire. This does spare, does have a very similar appearance to that railroad, fake railroad watch I mentioned. 18 size, it's in a standard case, stem wound, all that stuff. Plate design, same. Okay, fair enough. I can see why you'd think, hey, you know, this fake railroad's got to be an Appleton because Appletons were Cheshire's design. Okay, great. Well, let's have a look at an Appleton. I've got a couple of different ones, and what you'll find is that there are a couple of grades that I've come across. I have never seen a 21 jewel. I have never seen a 17 jewel. And it has taken me years just to get these three. Okay? It's not like they're all over the place. So the theory or statement was, oh, it's just a continuation of the last design. Okay. This is not a continuation of that design. Not even close. This is stem attached. This has to have a proprietary case for, for it to sit in. Gilt, nickel, damascene. Fine, you can have a different finish. But that's it. The plate design is different. Screw location is different. This is not that. So, where would this design come from? That design came from here. This is another Cheshire. This is a stem attached design. And, as you can tell, bears a very striking resemblance to the Appleton. Main difference, this is a slightly larger diameter than this one. But the pin for the spring is in the same location. Now, this engraved pattern is the same as the engraved pattern on the Cheshire. This is an 11 jewel Appleton. There are two holes here on the balance bridge that would have allowed for a micromic spring for fine regulation. Now there's also a variation in the plate design just above the balance wheel. This one comes to a point, this one doesn't. This is the typical design, this is not. Now these two watches are only separated by hundreds in the serial numbers. No jewel markings were put on any of these watches. The damn scheme patterns vary. All three of the Appletons I have have three different damn scheme patterns. But when you look at the engraving on the balance bridge, you'll notice. The Appleton is the same one, and it's simply cut off. This has the bridge thing on top of the plate. This does not. But, like I said, you look at it, and you'll find, hey, wait a minute. That is in the same space, spot as that. Your plate screws are in the same place. Everything matches. In fact, here's a funny one. This hole... This pin is here, plugged up. This is the design 
that the Appletons were based on. So, why this confusion? Why this, hey, you know, it should be based upon the last design. It is based upon the last design. You see, these have lower serial numbers than these. But these also have earlier serial numbers. What happened at the end of the Cheshire Watch Company isn't necessarily something out there in history to be able to say, hey, this is what happened. But what can I tell you happened based upon just observation? Well, the Cheshire Watch Company started with a stem attached movement. This one has serial number 44,124. This has 66,215. This is 84,000. And remember, the serial numbers continued from Cheshire to Appleton. You do not find this design in the higher serial range. So why would a company go from this to this? Well, this probably costs less to produce. It can be sold cheaper. And if the company was looking to try to survive because they were having financial difficulty, they could go back to the Cheshire, Connecticut, earlier design with the stem attached and stop producing the more expensive ones. There are all three of these are seven jewels. Two of these are seven jewel. One is eleven. So, when you look at all this, you come to realize that these were turned down smaller size plate of the very last design, but the very last design was not this design. And it was done here to save money to continue operating. This was a startup using that last design. So, Appleton watches aren't known for being high quality. Not anyway. It, Cheshire is not known for high quality. But Cheshires are typically gilt. Appletons are typically not. With a few variations here and there, most of your Appletons are similar. And I say similar because higher jewel count. Another myth, and I say it's a myth because until somebody shows me proof otherwise, there are no 1921 or even 17 Jewel Appletons in existence. They weren't made. And the only thing that somebody tries to attribute to Appleton as having a high Jewel count is a fake railroad watch based upon that design. So if you have a company making this design, why would they make that design as a fake railroad watch? It, it, you, know, you have your machinery set up to make these. Those fake railroads are probably left over from Cheshire material. Do they have a connection to O.E. Bell? No idea. O.E. Bell could have bought the Cheshire material with the factory equipment and sold off that material to somebody else. We have no written documentation that says, hey, these were made by Appleton. We have no written documentation saying that they were made by O.E. Bell. Nothing. They are a fake railroad watch. Pure and simple with a Cheshire Watch Company design. And the reason I, have, I, I, I bring this up is sometimes you have watches that are attributed to a high value that don't deserve it. And in my case, I believe that those railroad watches that are fake railroad watches like that do not deserve the high premium that the sellers think they do. If you have like a low-grade Seth Thomas 7 Jewel, or let's say a New York Standard low-grade 7 Jewel movement, and you stuck a bunch of, of fake jewels on it and put a fancy railroad name on it, does that make it more valuable and say the top end Seth Thomas or a higher end New York Standard, which I know is kind of one of those things that's kind of weird to say, but it's true. 
we have never held railroad, fake railroad watches as a high, in, in high regard. Yet this outlier has always been sitting out there, and it basically is leeching its its value from the rarer watch company with this tenuous link that doesn't exist except for any in anywhere except for what people seem to think and part of this history that you see here there are still you know you go back into the earlier times of people trying to research appleton they actually tried to attribute appleton to being a a private labeled cheshire it wasn't but that's what they were trying to to say at the time i've spent plenty of time serial number lists looking and researching both of these companies because this is my passion and this is where it came from I've got to understand where this company came from to understand its history in order to understand its history you've got to understand what the last design of cheshire actually was so there there is a an idea that maybe um maybe these cheshires that have a higher serial number are the same as the ones with the lower and i i, I really haven't an answer for that yet there's a possibility that yes these are the exact same designs in every way maybe but until I, have, I, I strip them down and, and take measurements of every part of the watch, there's no guarantee of whether or not this is just a rehashed design of that, or if this is actually a completely new fourth design. And when I say fourth, it's this is second, this is third. First had a covering, a, you know, a, an extended bridge around here. That's why this is sitting on top. It's because this plate would have gone all the way around, and it was almost a full plate. So you've got Cheshire, goes belly up, sits there for years. A wee bell comes along and says, Hey, I want to start a company in Appleton. Gets the equipment, moves it over, starts producing watches, dies off the you know, it's just the the, the company dies after just less than two years so from 1900 to 1903 you have the entire start to finish to the company from the moment they decide to create the company to breaking ground on a factory building the factory in 1901 moving all the equipment over starting production in 1900 late 1901 early 1902 running through until it goes belly up. And then he tries to move the company down the road. It doesn't work. Okay. So when you're looking at watches and you go, hey, Appleton, this is an Appleton. When you search and you go, hey, I'm looking for an Appleton, 99.9% .9 of the time somebody's going to show you an Appleton and Tracy. Me? These are what I'm after. And these are what I'm going to be after for Lord knows how long. But yeah, I just wanted to get some information, information out there for people who come across a watch, it may say Appleton Watch Company, and they're like, why doesn't this, why isn't this like any of the other wall of them designs? This is why. And again, they have zero connection to Appleton and Tracy or Waltham. But they are a, a part of watchmaking history in America. A kind of, you know, the, the that in entrepreneurship of somebody going, I'm going to start a watch company. You know, there's a couple other companies that are similar. Manistee Watch Company is one of those that lived for a very short period of time. Um, McIntyre Watch Company, very short period of time. 
But when it comes down to it, this represents years of looking. And I'm still trying to find the highest serial number Cheshire made. I want to know if it crosses into the Appleton. Because if it does, and this is crosses into this serial number range, that is old Cheshire material. Almost undoubtedly, and I want to know the measurements of the plates. I want to know, is it the same diameter as this one or this one? Anyway, when you go out online, look up the NAWCC. There's some interesting information out there about Cheshire here and there. Um, and I've updated information here and there and updated information with the Pocket Watch database. So I appreciate you listening and happy hunting.